Hey, up, man. Tuning in to Savage Productions. Let's go. Myself, they call me Savlo. Kill this beat, shoot it up like Twisted Metal. It's incredible, killers will spit the metaphor. Aiming for a fitted captain, quick to let the metal blow. Uh, I'm a East Side Bay. In the middle of the projects, the East Side race. Me. Going crazy on the day, they say nothing can save me. But I'm a ride to the castle. Grumpy. Grumpy, 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 you know Grumpy? Hey, if you see Grumpy, you know him, bro. He passes through, so tell him Sav pulled up over here. Okay, gracias. There's some things I gotta ask. Yo, what's good, what's good, what's good, my high salute to everybody out there, man, I've been sick, oh, I, uh, started feeling, like, sick with a headache and lightheaded Thursday in the daytime when I went to school, and then, uh, I got home and felt a little bit better, and I started drinking Thursday night, woke up, and my whole head was on fire, a lot of mucus, Bro, I thought I was dying. Um, so I was hanging and I had a sinus infection. And it took me out of commission for the weekend, right? So my apologies to the homie. We were supposed to do a show Saturday. I apologize, bro. Um, Lady Sev got a little sick, so she's been recouping. Um, the, the weekend was beautiful too, man. I was mad about it because it was so sunny. So, yeah, but we back to normal scheduling. I'm kind of feeling a little better, you know. Um, my eyes salute to everybody, though. So, um, you know where you at. You at Savlokes Hotels 2.0. Like, comment, subscribe, share, hit the notification bell. Let's get to this politic. Before I start this video, I'm not promoting gang life, gang culture. Just telling the testimony. Give a life experience and shining some light on the Denver Metro. <laughs> So with that being said, let's get to this video. And in this video, it comes from the homie Manuel, and he's like, man, you should do some more uh, some more story times. And like I said in the past, I could tell a million thousand stories about the testimony about Savage and different things, but I like to mix it up because I feel like too many story times, it gets repetitive and you lose your audience, but... Recommended videos. I gotta knock that out the ballpark. So big shout out to the homie Manuel. Um, let's get to it. This story time. <clears throat> I've actually talked about this in a live stream, but I never put it in a video format. So we gonna get to it, right? And this story time comes from a time frame when uh, we were really trying to convert the music into a business. Paper route records. Paper Route Officials, shout out to all the Paper Route Official homies, Paper Route Record homies, and uh, my cousin Bible, he was teaching us the ropes of business, we were trying to, you know, um, basically have a testimony in music, but we were trying to do it business orientated, but at the same time, you know, um, we, still we still from the streets, so politics are always going to be intertwined with that when you're doing that, you know, um, so Blue Drop and Thug One, one of the artists off of Paper Route Records, they come out with a project called Blue Drop and Thug One Thug Parlay. And the whole year when it dropped, every day we found ourselves out there grinding units, selling mixtapes, the, the Long Island Volume 1 to Volume 6 Long Island mixtape, the Blue Drop Thug One Thug Parlay project. And bro, there was so much money that was going through the circle through units. That's how we ate. That's how we did our thing. You know, it was just a big old grind. And it was a fun atmosphere because um, every big thing that was going on in the city. And I'm talking about like, we did not stop selling units in the snow. Bro, even if it's snow, we would get to a complex and, uh, and go sell units and get some hot cocoa. But anything that the city had going on. All Star Weekend, um, state fairs, low rider shows, concerts, anything in the summer, uh, flea market, 
just everything, bro. Taste of Colorado, um, Cinco de Mayo celebrations. Like, we would be up there selling units as a group. Get two carloads deep and get out there. Floss down, paper route, click shirts, you know, and we started networking around the box state because the hustle didn't just stop in Denver. The hustle went to other cities. So any thing that Pueblo had going on, their state fair, um, we knew about their big old club parties that they were trying to reinvent clubs out there. We would pull up to that. Um, Greeley would have, you know, um, they had a, a club out there that we knew the owners over there. They had a mall out there. They had, you know, the college out there. We started networking with people in Greeley. Grand Junction had the Mesa State, Mesa State homecoming week. Went out there. It was a big party on the campus of Mesa State. And, you know, it was just everything. Springs, all this, bro. So it was common for us to get out there on a regular basis. We would be in Denver in the morning, go to one of these cities, stay all night to the early morning and come back to Denver. Or if it wasn't cracking, we'd just come back to Denver and, uh, you know, get back out to the town. Because you could grind in the city at Chubby's still and go to these other little Mexican restaurants on Evans and Fedro. Stay open in South Cities to everybody getting out the clubs. Like, that's what we did, right? Um... We was trying to keep it business, but like I said, man, we from the streets and people, they know who we are. You know, we from the, we need them east side fools. Um, so I got the, I got the time frames mixed up on this, but there was a state fair that we went out to one time, sold like 500 units at the state fair. Um, but this time, um, cause I thought it was the same thing. I thought we went from Pueblo and then to Springs. This time we went straight to the Springs because my cousin had met the people that worked at the mall. I don't know if it was the Chapel Mall or the Citadel Mall. What to my Spring homies, what mall is by the Independent Records? Like what what street is that right there? But that mall is kind of in the middle, I guess. And that mall is where everybody goes. But my relative, my cousin, my OG cousin knew some of the people that worked in the mall, the barbershop, and they had a clothes store over there. And um, I think they had a CD store. And what was cool about the mall, them foods that my cousin knew, he started networking with these dudes. They would let us actually put consignments in their store. They would let us go in the store and sell CDs in their store because the, the mall would never let you just go sell CDs. The security would always try to kick us out, rush us and be like, you can't sell CDs in the mall. So we'll mess up the grind. So I think the way we even met them dudes is my cousin sold them a CD and they were like, you can come in our store and sell CDs. So we started doing that, right? <clears throat> so we went to go check on his, his consignments at different stores in Springs. And we started making our round around Springs. Springs is like a big circle. Um, went downtown, went to Academy, went to the mall, went to that independent records one of the reasons why we went to the independent records is because my cousin had actually an assignment in the independent records that he was going to collect his money on the assignment. The independent records is kind of in a little hood area, I think. I think that's their hood. <clears throat> and it was a perfect opportunity when he went to go check on his consignment for us to check music, right? Um we met somebody out there also, I think from the Colorado Cowboys that was riding with us. Like we picked him up and he rode with us for a couple hours. He was, he was showing us like Colorado Springs. And, um, we went to that independent records and I'm not going to lie at this time. I'm naive that Colorado Springs got gangs. I don't even, I don't even know they got politics out there. I'm just thinking it's a military base. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, let's go. I'm thinking it's just an army city. It's a military base where all the service people be um, because that's a lot of military be out there, right? <clears throat> Later down the road when I get to the penitentiary, I meet some some real life goons from Colorado Springs and they kind of run down. There's politics. They got Bloods, Crips, Vice Lords, GDs, um, North An like a bit of North Daniels and like a lot of Sudanios. Um, but at this time, I don't really even know that. You know, like, 
And at this time, I'm not really like to me outside of Denver. A lot of like the politics are kind of weird. They're not, you know, um, to me, like I said, I was real cocky. Like they're not our politics. So we don't really trip. We don't got no enemies out there. Um, but I was at the Independent Records and some essay fool pulls up some Sudanio fool. And he buys an album. He ain't even tripping, though. He buys a project. So, you know, it's a, it's a good atmosphere, right? So, it's getting later on in the night. It's about 9 o'clock, 9.30, 10. And the homie's like, we need to get back to Denver. There's some stuff going on in Denver. So, we asked the homie if he wants to go to Denver with us, with us to function. And we'll probably come back to Springs. He's like, nah, I got to take care of some stuff. So, we go drop him off back at his house in the Springs. And his neighborhood, it's like tucked away in this like this little neighborhood in in the corner of like so he's at like the the back of this corner, right? And it's in a neighborhood. So you come out that neighborhood and you start going down the main street. I don't know where I'm at. I just remember Main Street and then on the right there's a 7-Eleven. That 7-Eleven's right there, and then across the street, there's some apartments, and then you take that left. And it takes you to like Academy. Academy's like their one of their big streets. Um, so we're like, let's get some gas. Um, cousin Bible, he's like, hey, I need to roll this little blunt before we go back to Denver. Maybe if you see somebody at the gas, they see if they got some. Because I think he only had a half a blunt. And they was trying to get some more blunts um, to have for the travel. We pull up. Bible's driving. Thug One's in the passenger seat. I'm in the back on the right door and my cousin Gats is on the left door and he pulls up to the gas tank the first like the the furthest one from the entrance right that first that further one and I tell Gats I said let's go in real quick let's get some Gatorades so I'm going to get some Gatorade some snacks for the travel back to Denver because it's about an hour back um to Denver we come in and then I remember Thug one, he comes in after us. So the only one, the only individual now that's at the car is Bible. He's still in the driver's seat. He's still in, in the car. I look, and like I said, you always got to be on your toes because you don't really know what neighborhood that is. You know what I'm saying? You just you still on your toes because you're always just, you know, your head's on a swivel, just peeping out the the circumference of the area. I see this Monte Carlo pull up, and they're kind of beaten. And I look in, and it kind of looked like some hood fools. There's a there's a, a black fool that's driving, a Mexican fool in the passenger seat, and then in the back, I notice it's another fool in the back. And you could tell you could tell off top, they're gang related, right? This fool got a hat, a red Boston hat with a big old red bandana in his hat. And I'm looking. He gets out the car. He's flamed up. Now, usually, I'm already on it. But this ain't our backyard. I don't even know who these fools are, right? I have a video camera, this little video camera that I used to record everybody that bought CDs also. I thought I was the cameraman. Docu documenting everything, right? Um, I come out to 7-Eleven because now I'm like, okay, who are these fools? I come out to 7-Eleven just to be, you know peep out the aspect and I don't even make it obvious that I'm with my cousin over here because we don't usually do that just in case stuff like this happens so I get out I see the fool with the red bandana walking up and I'm like hey what's up my homie we out here from Denver you know we pass it through we on this promotional tour and he's like oh that's what's up blood so automatically it just indicates where they're from right and I say yeah you should show some love he's like oh that's what's up bro I'll show you some love how much your CD he's being real cool bro like this is why it was messed up because this dude was actually being hella cool. I said, $5. He said, I'll buy a couple of them. Buy a couple of them from you, you know? I said, cool. So when he goes into 7-Eleven, I'm kind of peeping my cousin in the 7-Eleven to make sure my cousin's cool. And then I hear uh, my cousin Thug One and Gats is in the 7-Eleven. So I already know you always got to. Now you got to be weary because the, young, the younger homies now, they're like, they're they're off their active stuff, so I'm like, oh man, it might pop. But at the same time, the vibes is cool. So he comes out. Um, my cousin don't press or what anything. He comes out and he breaks bread, right? He breaks bread. 
Um, and then he, he's like, yeah, man, keep doing your thing. I said, yeah, we're going back to Denver. He's like, that's what's up. I said, what hood you from? He's like, neighborhood, blood. You know what I'm saying? I said, get it on the camera, bro. So I let, I even let homie bang his, his uh, hood on my camera. And then when that, when I heard that, when I heard him banging and everything, everything was good. I started hearing hollering over here where my cousin Bible was. And I seen them two individuals like walking up and Bible's backing up. And Bible has a blunt in his hand, and they're like, that's how you going to jack our blunt? So now I'm like, what the hell? What's going on? So now the fool with the red bandana puts his attention. He kind of starts walking up. I walk up, and like I said, they don't even know. They don't even know that we're actually with Bible. I think they thought homie was alone. The fool with the red bandana starts walking towards that. I start walking up. My cousin Gats realized what's going on. And then Thug One, he's the last one to like peep out. I said, hold up. So I walk up and my cousin Bible's backing up. And they're getting, they're like walking up on his fast. My cousin Bible stole on him. Boom. Hit this fool. Dazed him. And the other fool tried to run up and he hit this fool. Boom. He, he hit the fool with the left. Bible hit the fool with the left and dazed him. And all of a sudden, I just seen the homie Thug One behind me like start sprinting quietly the fool with the red bandana he's about to walk up and, and him and try to hit my cousin from the side and when he's about to walk up he don't see the homie thug one that was in back of me walk up like sprinting kind of silent and when he's about to cock back my cousin thug one he was quicker to the draw and this fool just came from like all the way cock back and he just caved this fool Bow, he put his whole shoulder into it, twisted. Mm. And this fool just, the fool with the red bandana just hit, he just went like a board and just fell. Boom. Now, I felt bad, but at the same time, it's go time, bro. As soon as I seen that fool hit the ground, I was going to actually say, hey, we're with this fool. But as soon as I seen it just get crazy, when he hit the ground, I was already running up now, and as soon as his head hit the ground, I just soccer kicked this fool. Boom! Then my other little cousin comes. They he starts booting that fool. The the dude that the dude that initially them dudes that initially started it, um, they see that my cousins win more fools. They hop in the car, and these dudes just take off and they leave their homie knocked out in the middle of the 7-Eleven. The 7-Eleven people started coming out. And my cousin's like, let's go, let's go, because we're not from the Springs. We get in the car, we go, boom, boom, we start going through traffic, we start skirting out, because like I said, we can't, we can't afford to go to jail. Um, then, all of a sudden, my cousin Bible tells us what went on, and I guess he was trying to buy a blunt. These fools gave him a skinny blunt, and he took the blunt they had already rolled, and that's what caused the whole thing. So he tried to buy a blunt, and he felt like he was shoring because the blunt was hella skinny. They, they gave him a blunt that was hella skinny, and I guess he they had a blunt. He just grabbed it, so that was the situation. Yeah, but that was the time we got out, got into it with the neighborhood bloods in Colorado Springs, bro. Like I said, every city has some type of gang banging, man, and uh, that's that's a story from the Springs, bro. So shout out to everybody, Big Manuel. Thank you for the recommended video. I'm all high salute. Let's go.